Sarai, Roger Sarai joins us now. He's of the uh, he's an anti-corruption activist. Thank you for coming on today. Good morning. Thank you. Well, when we talk about reviewing big stories that happened in 2013, this year, uh, corruption-wise, mm -hmm. of course, the EFCC will always come into the fray. The ICPC will also come into the fray, and lots of other people and perhaps other government agencies. So, for you, what stood out? Um, I think um, the big event when we talk about corruption that happened this year, you know, would be that of the Taraba case. You know, I mean, that is the key word in terms of the um, what we call political corruption. And that gives rise to economic corruption, social and moral corruption. Because once you get it wrong at the political level, even at the electoral level, then inevitably you have all others coming in, uh, as we, we've seen with... EFCC and ICPC and even the judiciary because all it takes is for um, the politically exposed persons to find means of influencing either the judiciary, the law enforcement agencies, and that is where they get them corrupted. Uh, and that is the big story um, for this year, basically because it, it borders more on impunity. Uh, and that is where you have people who are meant to be accountable um, naturally excluding themselves or being free from either forms of punishment or any form of laws because they know that they have either the powers that be in, in their kitty or they have the instrumentalities of, um, of um, governance uh, in, in their control. So inevitably, impunity leads us to the collapse of what we call the institutional government in any country, and that is what we have. I'm, I'm a little confused, though. I mean, we know that, the, yes, the Taraba state was controversial, but yeah. a host of people might not describe that as corruption. Uh, be, uh, what did you expect, or what did you think should have been happening in Taraba state? Yeah, inevitably, um, that is why, the, that is the challenge that we have in this country. Um, we had that same similar experience with the former president, Yaradua. You know, where people were going to govern Nigeria, were even already governing Nigeria by proxy. And that was exactly what happened in Taramba and is happening. A letter was written by, a claim to have been written by the governor. That letter was sent to, an, to the House of Assembly. The authorship of that letter is in doubt. It has not been proven up till now. Not the police, neither the police, nor the Attorney General of the Federation. Well, you know, he went to court. Spite. Who went to court? The matter. But it's been thrown out there. It's been thrown out of court. Even Mr. Falano too also Which went to court. Were, I think there were about three cases that Several went to court. cases, but the one that was to compel the House of um, Assembly to cons consider the letter has been thrown out. The one that Mr. Falano got from Marabuja High Court, yeah. mandating the Attorney General of the Federation to go and, I mean the police, to go and investigate and bring about the genuity or otherwise of that letter is not being followed by the Inspector General of Police. You know, the they, Attorney they, General was also mandated to go there to actually ask for the state of health of the governor. It, it has not been done. So when we're talking about the impunity and corruption aspect, one, we're talking about the letter. Two, we're talking about also the debt of the Speaker of that House of Assembly. Up until today, even though there was an attempt on his life earlier, before he eventually died in these mysterious circumstances. Nothing has been done, and we don't know yeah, what has happened to that. He was involved in an accident, to understand. No, there was a time that they shot on his car when he went for an, for an event. And but the there was also a time that... There was also an, at a point when he had an accident, which was also claimed to be like a stage manager, mm -hmm. before he died in these other mysterious circumstances. And investigations? Also, today, nothing. We've not, we've had nothing. The man came into Nigeria. Was he reported to the police? Yes, uh, it was reported. Yeah, the cases were reported to the police. Four months ago, precisely, today is 25th of December, the governor came in 25, 25th of August 2013. Four months till date. He has not resumed office. He has not attended social functions for us to see. And we have a very clear case here. You can all remember um, the case of um, Governor Sullivan Chime of Enugu and the wife who was claimed to be mentally unstable. Can we say that he has not attended anyone for the cameras? Or yeah, yeah. what, what if he's attended and 
Tower no, Branch sure should have made it should have made news. No, over. because we I, saw, I, I, the, go, we saw I, the wife of Governor Philip and Chime here. Before we go into that particular matter, mm. uh, there there are some fundamental differences between this case and what happened in late President Yaradua's case. Okay. I mean, there we 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 asked to see the president. We were told that he was in Saudi Arabia for a very long time. When mm -hmm. he came back, eventually he was brought back in the dead of the night, and nobody saw anything mm -hmm. till he eventually passed on. Mm -hmm. In this particular scenario, the governor returned mm. in broad daylight, mm -hmm. attempted to wave to people. He might not have succeeded in that, but mm. we saw him mm -hmm. return physically. Right. We saw him address uh, the people of Taraba State mm -hmm. in a very, it might have been slurred, but mm -hmm. there was a television appearance, mm -hmm. you know, where he was addressing people. Of We've also seen people visit him. Mm -hmm. The last we saw was the visit of uh, uh, go on, Je Goan, General Kubu mm -hmm. Goan, and his wife, you know, mm -hmm. and we heard him speak and say certain things, and we even mm -hmm. saw he had the ability to laugh. What I'm trying to draw mm -hmm. are certain distinctions between that case and this one. I think this one leaves us in an even more difficult situation no, because we've seen him hmm. and it's about assessing whether or not he's truly fit, right. which some people <coughs> will say is subjective. No, I, I think that we, we wouldn't be expecting to have a similar replay of not even showing up because we have that experience with Yaradua. So what we're talking about now is not that he is dead. We know that he's still alive, but the question is, he's incapacitated. And that you can see, you also are, are, are used to, that he made attempt at waving to people, which he was unable to do. But what I ask is, with that kind of situation, is that person fit to administer a state as a governor? Which are people who, wants, who are making attempts at fostering him into office, are they doing him any good? Is this what the Taliban people want? Is the crisis in Taliban now, which leaves a very huge vacuum, in terms of the power play, yeah. Mr. Mr. The Mr. Raj, just before you go on, I mean, I think that at the end of the day, you have very valid questions. You're asking a question I want to believe, not that you're making statements as to whether or not he's incapacitated. Uh, because if you say that, if you're making a statement and confirming mm -hmm. or saying that from what you have seen, he is incapacitated, some people will argue that, you know, mental incapacitation mm -hmm. and physical incapacitation are two different things. Com mm -hmm. Especially considering what he's gone through, how many people survive a blink crash? Mm -hmm. You know, so do, no, do I mean, I, this, this should we this also be drawing a distinction as well? Are you just asking no, the no, question? What I'm saying, you see, I, um, it, it's a different thing if we're talking about the person of just um, Mr. Suntai Dambaba, but we're talking about a governor of an office, which requires both your mental and physical capacity to deliver. So when you're saying we're drawing a distinction, why do we need to draw the distinction? So are you office requires if, someone, if someone who, is physically challenged. You cannot uh, administer a yeah, state. So if you, no, I mean, we have a governor in Nasarawa state who is physically challenged. I'm not sure if you know that. The, the governor of Nasarawa is actually physically challenged. <laughs> Why and he's still like, no. So now the key thing is, do we know him in that state of physical incapacity? If that is the point, and then it is admitted, this man is physically incapable, of doing certain things. No, it physical, can be on, on the wheelchair. Does physically challenge means being physically incapable for you? No, no. That's what I'm saying. Okay, physical uh, challenge is different from the incapacity. So I'm talking right. about incapacity here, and I'm saying the man in Nassau is physically How do you physically determine incapacity physically, no. without a medical uh, report? No, that, let them bring a medical report. The only no, you are the talking only about no, that alleged access yes. to a medical determination. We've asked for that. They can't prove it. They can't show it.